Hey everyone, it's your girl, hashtag JLoan. I'm coming at y'all. I'm sitting here working at my desk and it's just been one of those days and I just really want to give you some information. So uh, obviously rates have uh, dropped this week and it's important because sometimes uh, people ride the fence on whether they want to refinance or um, they want to ride the fence because they believe they're going to go lower. But there's also things that happen when you um, get contacted. So we're really good at contacting our past borrowers, our friends, our families uh, in regards to refinancing your home. Um, and so when we call you, there's a couple things that will, will happen. One, we'll discuss something called trigger leads. Um, and then we'll also talk about what happens with those that causes confusion plus what you see online. So these are actual scenarios that have happened to me in the past couple days, okay? So um, a borrower calls me and basically tells me that, um, you know, they, they went to try and refinance and they got this phenomenal quote I asked them who the company was for because obviously I like to retain my borrowers and really just kind of see what they were offered. So I'm in the state of Texas and there are some types of loans that here in the state of Texas we you, you can't do. But if you're a company here in the state of Texas, you know that you can't, can't do that. Well, long story short, they get this wonderful quote. I mean, it's an amazing quote. Um, it was a VA... Texas cash out loan, phenomenal rate. And I break the news and say, wow, this, this looks phenomenal. But um, VA doesn't let you uh, actually take equity out of your home in the state of Texas. So I'm sorry, this is, this is not a quote I can match because you can't do that here. So she was shocked. And normally, I've had it happen before, if, the bar, if, if she didn't know me, I've had a borrower before tell me basically I didn't know what I was doing, left, went to, another, uh, went to the same company and then invested money only for the loan officer in that company that's not in the state of Texas to basically tell them that, I'm sorry, we messed up. We didn't know Texas laws. So I say this to say, whether it's me or someone else, choose someone locally because our... our um, laws here in the state of Texas are known by the loan officers that work in the state of Texas. So whether it's J loan or someone right down the street, get your quotes from somebody locally who's going to give you correct information because my last borrower lost money because they believed them. Uh, and obviously they weren't my borrower, but they were somebody that came to me. They believed them. They lost money, went through only to find out that this out of state company doesn't know Texas laws. And so they get a quote and they believe that quote or that you don't know what you're doing and then they end up uh, not being happy in the end. So it's really, really important for you to choose someone locally here in the state of Texas because for my borrower, luckily, um, she, has her, she did her first loan with me and came back to me and I was able to say, well, anyway, she goes back to the lender and she tells the lender that, um, hey, you know, they... The lender said that you can. They were like, oh, yeah, um, we've been working to get that law changed. Really? That was the answer you came up with instead of, hey, I messed up. So let me tell you something. People have been trying to change that Texas cash out law forever. And he just didn't know what he was doing and wasn't able to, to fess up on that. So that's one situation. Two, when rates drop, I just had a client just now. It's like, you quoted me a rate, but that's not what I see online. Well, great. I'm so happy that you see that online. But let's be clear. When you see something online, that online is for ideal situations. 780, 800 credit scores, 20% equity or 20% down. I mean, perfect scenario. And yeah, maybe if your situation is perfect, then yeah, maybe you could get those rates online and I can offer them to you too. But everyone's story is different. Your story is different. 
Maybe you have a 660 credit score or a 620 credit score and those rates online don't apply to you. So it's important not to always look at what you see online and if you do see it online, read the fine print as to how that's happening. I watch a lot of podcasts. I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I watch a lot of YouTube. Um, I get quotes from other lenders and a lot of them, you know what they do? They quote you 2% discount. And if you're a borrower, you don't even know that what you're really looking at. It's a whole bunch of fees thrown at you that they're not explaining. No one's going to say, hey, yeah, I'm able to match that rate at 2.75, but I'm going to charge you 2%. They're just going to say, oh, that's what you got? Yeah, I'll, I'll get it for you if that's what you want. And they'll quote you 2% down. And if you don't know how to read the fine print, or if you don't have somebody that's on your side um, to really go through the fees and the details and, and see what it costs long term, is it beneficial to buy down? Um, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice. So to me, mortgages is not really about sales. It's about relationships. It's about trusting the person that you're dealing with, that they are in your best interest. And if you look at your uh, loan officer and you can't trust that they're in your best interest, then it's time for you to look for a new loan officer. I mean, that's just the reality of it. You gotta have, this is a big financial transaction. You gotta be able to sleep knowing that your stuff is being worked on and is being, you're giving the best options, okay? So if you're looking to purchase or refinance, uh, again, this video isn't about me, but I will make it about me a little bit. Trust me to help you, okay? Um, my business comes 100% referred. I have yet to buy leads. And yeah, I, I may start doing some Facebook ads just to get some information and try to get clients who don't know me. But most, 100%, not most, 100% of my business right now comes from me and my past business. So trust me to help you. Right now, rates have lowered and it is a good time for you to look into your own loan and see if maybe you should refinance. So I'm not, and I say this all the time, I'm not supposed to talk about specific interest rates, but I will say um, if your rate is above, I don't know, four and a half percent, I'll say, it's time for you to consider maybe refinancing and, 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 and then using someone who's going to explain the option to you on whether it's even beneficial. You know, if you're moving in two years, maybe it's not a good idea to refinance. I don't know, but I'll know that when I talk to you because I really care about why you're refinancing and whether long-term uh, that refinance is going to uh, benefit you uh, in both the long and the short term. So uh, please remember a lot of the times my clients believe I only do purchases. I don't know why, but I do purchases. I do refinance. I do constructions. I do the whole state of Texas, not just the Dallas Fort Worth area. I do the whole state of Texas, the whole state of Florida. And now is a good time to um, refinance. So, um, or purchase. I mean, honestly, you should be looking into doing both, whether that's primary residence or um, a secondary home or investment property. It, it really is time for you to make a move. I talked with a borrower today and I said this in one of my meetings. They're paying $1,700 a month in rent right now. Um, over 12 months, that's $20,400 in, in, in rent. Now, I don't even like to waste $100, but the thought of me wasting $20,000 a year in rent is, it shouldn't be comfortable. And this is the year of getting outside of your comfort zone um, and doing things that may be uncomfortable at first for a very large uh, gain. Okay, so no more excuses. 2020 is the year of no more excuses. There's ways you can make extra money for savings. Um, stop wasting your money on rent, especially around here in Keller. They have built so many apartment complexes that are so expensive and you're wasting money. You know, you're wasting money. You, you can't even paint the walls as your own. Um, you you got to be quiet. You're, you're in boundaries. And I'm not saying when you get a house, you could just be wild, but it's yours. 
know, if you want to paint the room black with polka dots, then paint it black with polka dots. Um, and that ownership is what will go on. I'll tell you a quick story before I get off. I went to uh, Washington uh, to um, kind of uh, uh, not debate, but uh, yeah, I can't even think of the words. But I went to Washington on behalf of the mortgage industry um, to petition for certain change in the industry. And this was two years ago. And don't quote me directly, but Ben Carson uh, told a story and he told a story and I'm not going to tell the whole story, but he told a story about um, him and his family needing to move to another area uh, for the schooling and the education that he needed, but uh, his parents couldn't afford uh, the housing in that area. So they ended up buying a, a, a really small house and that was able, I mean, they had that house their whole lives while he, he him and his family and they lived and, and went to school. Well, um, that one house that sometimes you think, oh, it's too small. You know, I don't, I don't want to start there. I want to start with the big golden house. Well, he, he went on to say how that one house had gained so much equity that his parents were able uh, to help them go to college financially. Okay, so I know sometimes you don't see the big picture now. Maybe the house isn't your dream house. But it's better than renting and wasting $20,000 a year, right? And he was able, they were able, his parents were able to take that house in the future, cash out some of the equity to help his family go to school. So sometimes it's not about your short term or, you know, a lot of times people do things for, for what other people say. Who cares? Rent. And what do you, I mean, you want to show them a nice apartment? I mean, that's great, but it's not yours. Wouldn't it be nice to have your own home that you can do construction? I mean, I've seen some really nice, really, I mean, I see every appraisal that comes through and I see some really nice refurbished older homes that they completely do the inside little by little. And my clients send me pictures of their upgrades and what they do in the future. And, they're, and that one little house that they bought that they may too have thought, man, this is not what I wanted. They're able to make it their own and gain equity and, and, and build wealth for not just you, but for your children. And so uh, I'm very passionate about what I do. I'm passionate about home ownership. And not that home ownership is, is, is for everybody today, but at some point, you need to consider buying over renting because you can always change that one house to a rental. Um, maybe your kids grow up and you give it to them. There's so many things that you can do with that one house or you can sell it. I mean, when we moved to Texas in 2008, you could buy a really nice home for like $125,000. Well, guess how much that $125,000 home or that 150 house is selling for today? $250,000 to $275,000. So I ask you, what would you do with an additional $100,000? to $150,000 from a home that you purchased 10 years ago. I mean, think about it. Look at your debts. Look at what you want. Think, think of that. What could you do with that money right now? So sometimes we got to step outside of our box and make sacrifices for, for, for bigger goals um, and, and bigger things in life. So if you're on the verge of purchasing, refinancing, you just want somebody to talk to, have questions, um, I know no one better, and I know I say it all the time, but I really believe that uh, I am the best out there. Uh, I want things for you wholeheartedly, um, very passionate, and I want you to learn through the process. Um, lastly, when I say learn through the process, you know, people speak to me about credit repair all the time. And it's not that I don't believe in credit repair. It's just that everybody in credit repair doesn't teach you how to further manage your credit, okay? So that's really the big thing. If you can miraculously just remove anything off, what does it teach you? Nothing. So wouldn't it be better to have someone who can teach you how to better manage your credit? And yeah, some people say, well, just stop spending money. Well, that's not realistic. You can have credit cards. It's how you use those credit cards. You can fix your own credit. You just have to know what to touch and what not to touch. And if you're not given that advice, if you're not taught 
that. And like you said, I'm not talking bad about all credit repair. I'm not even talking bad about credit repair. I'm saying that most credit repairs do not teach you how to manage your credit after supposedly they repair or remove what comes off of there. Not only that, some credit repair is in hopes that it is going to come off, that they are going to re agree that they report it wrong. Let's be realistic. When you pull your credit, you know a couple things, right? One, you know if that's truly your debt, right? So credit repair is hoping that it's reported wrong out of the 27,000 laws that they have when it comes to reporting that one debt. Well, they could take it off, but what are the chances that that creditor say, no, I really want my money and now I'm gonna put it back on because I'm gonna report it the right way. So I, I, I ride the fence on that. I've also seen credit repair where um, they touch things that shouldn't be touched. And there are things that you can touch on your credit report um, that will lower your score. And so if you're not taught these things and you just trust someone else, you're just giving away your money to trust someone else to do the process, it could take you a very long time to purchase a home because you went about it the wrong way, okay? Um, remember that the mortgage industry changed many years ago where disputed accounts on your credit report uh, they, they, they no longer accept that. And again, the reason why is because when you dispute something on your credit report, it totally removes that debt from the scoring model. And so what happens is, let's just say you had a 500 credit score and you went and disputed everything negative on your credit report. If we pulled your credit score 30 days later and everything's in a disputed status, guess what your score would be now? Super high. So back in the day, we, you, you'd come in and you'd get a loan, but those debts were really yours. And so once, once the disputes are removed, your score goes back down. So lenders picked up on it after the big mortgage meltdown. And now they're just like, hey, if they have disputed accounts over this amount, you know, blah, 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 all the laws that come along with it, we need you to remove those disputes. So here you went and you spent money on credit repair and they disputed everything. But now you really found that home that you like and you want to put an offer on it. You come to us, your score looks great, but we see all these disputed accounts. And then j Loan's going to say... Hey man, your score looks good and it looks like we could proceed, but I need you to take all these disputes off. So not only does that take time and now that house that you really want is probably not on the market anymore, but when you take off those debts, I can kind of see just based on date, whether how much is, I can't tell you how much, but I know if it'll affect your score. And most of the time it does. And it puts you in a place where either you don't qualify or your score drops enough where you can't, you don't have available all of the products that that are, that are open. Um, so once again, I say that it's just like a gym, right? Yeah, you can go have surgery and lipo and you can do all that stuff that costs a lot of money and it's quick and it's easy. But if you don't continue to work out, everything you just paid for will eventually come back and you just wasted your money. So the same thing with credit repair. Um, if you don't learn how to manage your, your, your debt that you have without closing everything and paying everything to zero, then unfortunately that cycle will continue um, all the time. And so it's important that you're taught how to better manage your credit. That, that's more than just uh, being financially smart. It's learning how to really manage your debt and your credit. So like I said, I don't sell mortgages. I help people financially um, and in turn, for that, I help them all around. Credit, financials, savings. And I'm not a CPA, I'm, I'm not a financial advisor, but I can teach you enough to know how to proceed in, in your future outside of, of, of buying a home. So anyways, this is the longest live I've ever done. I know I see a lot of you all on here. And, um, and I appreciate you watching for this whole time. Uh, this video started about rates dropping and, and time to purchase and time to refinance. Um, I talked a little bit about uh, credit repair. I talked about what you see online and what you get. I also talked about using a lender outside of the state who don't know the, the laws here in the state of Texas and what you can and can't do and how it affected one of my borrowers. Um, and, and then I ended it obviously with let me help you. I mean, at the end of the day, right? Uh, you know, if you think I'm in sales, there's my sales, there's my sales pitch right there. Let me help you, whether it's now or in the future. 
that may be a part of your education, your advice, your comfort, uh, and, and becoming a part of uh, your friendship and a part of the J. Long family. It would be my pleasure to help you, your family, your loved ones, your, your teachers, your, I mean, your, your firemen, your police officers. I, I want to help everyone that I can. I service the whole state of Texas, the whole state of Florida, and I'm happy to help you. So if you have any questions, uh, I'm just going to uh, scroll through here and see if there's any questions that I could answer. So Jessica, yep, you asked about that, and I think I addressed that. Um, Ken, thank you, Choose J. Loan, one of my previous clients is on there, uh, and I appreciate that. Um, but, and I see, uh, you know, there's, there's just a lot of people I wanna say hi to you all. So Ken, Willie, Claudia, Philip, I see all of you on here, Martina, uh, Sharonda Pearson, uh, Carrie, uh-oh, my, my phone is about to fall. Um, Jessica, what's up, Jay, my gym partner. Uh, Kelly, Cheryl, uh, Big Mike, what's up? Call Realtor Mike, Sherry Barnes, hello, sweetie. Carl, Crystal, Jessica Tucker, Jessica Enos, Bill Emmon, what's up, buddy? Susan Black, I miss you, lady. Charles Howard, what's up, buddy? Pam Miller, hey, man. Y'all, y'all don't know, but I'm, I'm gonna say it. My, uh, one of my, uh, not one of my, the best. Uh, I, I have the best closer in, in the whole company. At least I believe so. Um, that's, that's my lady right there, and I, I'm nothing without my team. So uh, Amy Pettigrew, Cheryl, uh, Renee Ray, uh, Lori, um, Pam, my, uh, my uh, processor Crystal. I'm, I'm nothing without these ladies and, and they, they help me tremendously. They help you tremendously. When you come through here, um, we're all part of the team and uh, this, is, this is a team effort to make your process seamless and, and painless. And sometimes it may not start that way uh, depending on where you, you come in at, but um, we definitely make it. When, when it's time for you to purchase, my team is gonna do everything we can uh, to get you closed and especially get you closed on time. And uh, like I said, education is huge at our company um, and friendship is huge and honesty is huge in our company. And those are those are the reasons why I really uh, chose and I stay where I am. I'm actually about to make three years here at Union. And uh, let me see, I got in at 2006. So this would be my 14th year this October in the mortgage business. So I can't imagine what else I would be doing in, 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 in my life. Uh, I, you know, it isn't about, I, I always mess around. It isn't about always being a boss chick, but I love to manage and I, I like to see my little birds one day fly away and be successful. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this is my team. I love what I do. And uh, if I can help you or someone you know, it would be my pleasure uh, to be a part of your home purchase or your home refinance. So it's your girl, hashtag j -Load. And I know most of the time I'm goofy on here with my memes and yesterday I sang for y'all. Um, but behind the scenes, I'm very serious about what I do. I'm very passionate about what I do. And I hope to help you and your family soon, okay? Talk to you soon. Love you, bye-bye.